The Hall of Justice is the symbol of the administration of justice in Trinidad and Tobago. Every aspect of the Hall of Justice was designed to reflect the seriousness and significance of its function as a judicial, governmental structure. Located in the heart of Port of Spain, it is surrounded by historic buildings of political, social and religious significance. It was designed to take its place among rather than overwhelm these important buildings. By the 1960s, it had become clear that a building for the judiciary was needed. The Supreme Court was located in the Red House as well as other legal quarters, and it had become extremely crowded. So we were, uh, when I say we, the legal system, the judges and the profession, we were outside uh, <laughs> Uh, being given uh, accommodation by other government departments. But when uh, we moved into the Hall of Justice, uh, this was uh, a, a different uh, uh, situation altogether, and one that was uh, much more compatible um, with a proper recognition of uh, the um, judiciary as uh, one of the three arms of the government. The design of the building was the result of an international competition which was won by Anthony C. Lewis and Associates in 1973. The task of building a Hall of Justice was an extremely complex one and ACLA formed alliances with different international specialists to help with the project. It was also an extremely large undertaking, involving 256,000 square feet that needed to include 16 courts on one floor. ACLA negotiated a contract with the British contracting firm Higgs and Hill, based on only six drawings. But by the time the building was complete, 3,000 drawings had been done. An important aspect of the design was that it needed to be compatible with the scale of the surrounding buildings on Woodford Square. Another challenge to the architects was the fact that the courts had to be designed with separate, discrete circulation patterns. It's very complex because there are many different types of people that move around in this building that must never meet. Um, obviously, the judges who can't exactly meet you know, the prisoner in the corridor. <laughs> they have to move in a certain discrete area of communication. Then you have the jurors as well who must be completely uncontaminated by any um, meeting of anybody. The interior of the Hall of Justice was constructed with great consideration paid to the seriousness of the building's purpose. The colors in the courts were somber with brown wood dark carpets, and the lighting was specifically muted. There was also great complexity to how the courtrooms were laid out. The way a court is designed is remarkably complex for a little room. You think, it's, oh, it's a room, but the angle that the, the witness gives evidence at to the position of the judge, he has to be able to observe the whole room, including the face of the witness, very important to see his inflections and so on, and how he's responding to the questions. So do the jury, if there's a jury in that court. One of the highlights of the building is the open public spaces, which create a very different impact compared to the sober and serious courts. The hall itself, the hall of justice, the hall that connects all the, the public hall, you know, that is a brighter room and much more cheerful as well, but the, the scale of it, you know, it's, it's huge, eh? it's two, two or three stories high, and um, everything is connected to it. Um, a, a beautiful space, really, it's like a th cathedral. You know? Externally, every aspect of the design has a specific function and purpose. The top and the bottom of the building was sloped in to help break down the scale and keep it from being overpowering. 
The exterior panels also served an important role as a heat and sound barrier, critical elements for a central city location. The panels were made in Holland out of a self-cleansing concrete with aggregate and connected by stainless steel brackets. Now the existing design is very typical of the contemporary minimalist designs or functionalist designs in that the materials are all natural, all raw. As you see, nothing on the, the exterior of the building is painted. The Hall of Justice was completed on September 21st, 1985. It housed the Court of Appeal, the Civil and Criminal Divisions of the High Court in Port of Spain, and the Tax Appeal Board. There was a main library on the second floor, as well as a tax appeal court. The Hall of Justice was also witness to a significant moment in Trinidad's political history. Well, it was in 1990, uh, July the 27th, and we were having a wine and cheese party in the Hall of Justice when uh, word came that um, the parliament was under attack by uh, people with guns and so on. And, uh, some of our number went upstairs to a higher level where they, to look through the glass uh, at the Red House to see what they could. All of a sudden a bullet uh, came through one of the glass panes and that uh, quickly dispersed um, the, the, the lawyers who were up there and they came down looking very uh, ashen, white, pale and they, they uh, confirmed that this was um, that this was actually happening. Today the Hall of Justice stands as a symbol of our independent judiciary. I, I'm pleased that locals, lo local professionals and local um, craftsmen had a major role in this project. Um, it is an extremely high quality project. Anywhere in the world, this building would, be, would stand against any um, international court building of its time. The Hall of Justice honors both the significance of its function as well as its location in Port of Spain's historic center. Its design is indicative of its importance as the home of the judicial arm of the government of Trinidad and Tobago.